Good afternoon. I am Valerie R. Austin, the author of the Students' Comprehensive Guide for College and Other Life Lessons. I wrote the book to assist high school students and their parents to navigate the journey of careers in college. I am also the host of the Employer Speaks series, which is designed to highlight different careers and the path to achieving those careers. Today, I have two very special guests. Notary Beckford and Sean Atkinson are small business owners and entrepreneurs. Since their incarceration and release from prison many years ago, they have become the ideal role models for second chances. After release from prison, Notary started his first company named Beckford Trucking LLC. Since 2021, however, Notary is the owner and founder of the record label Paper Bag Cartel, also known as PBC and LLC. Notary is a rapper whose stage name is Bags, aka Big Hefe, who has produced the single Chain Gang. He also speaks to groups about his experiences and successes to inspire, lead, and ignite positive change. Sean Atkinson is the Chief Operating Officer for PBC. He is also a cosmetologist, landscaper, electrician, and plumber. Sean learned many of these career skills while in prison. He has translated his skills and talents to successfully operate in the business world. Both professionals are business builders and leaders. Through hard work and dedication, Notary and Sean have overcome obstacles to repeatedly turn creative ideas into successful business strategies. I look forward to this discussion with Notary and Sean to explore their path to success while thriving in the exciting career of entrepreneurship. Thank you for watching. Let me ask you this, Sean, in terms of, did you have mentors or role models when you were in high school and how did they impact where you went with your life? Yes, I had uh, good mentors and I had bad mentors. And it was up to me to decide which way do I go. So you look at, you got the good and you got the bad. And it's just like, I was over here and I was over here, but at the same time, I was still me. So you look at it, the mentors, I'm thankful for both because I experienced this computer. I experienced both worlds. And I know as in being older now, I know right from wrong. And for me to tell the younger generation, if I were to go back in time, I wouldn't take nothing back because I wouldn't be right here speaking to you right now if I wouldn't go through what I'm going through back in the days. But to speak to the younger generation, it just pay attention. That's it. Because you got to understand these teachers wake up every day and have to come to school to teach you things that they know. And I feel like that's a challenge for the teachers when you have a class clown and when you have a person that's interrupting other kids that want to learn. I feel like if a person don't, if you don't want to learn, don't stop someone else from learning because I feel like you're going to be the person stopping them from succeeding where they're trying to go. So I just feel as in just kids, just pay attention. That's all you have to do is just pay attention. All right, well, let me let me discuss, and I'll, I'll stay with you, Sean, with this one. Let's discuss your past as a convicted felon. Let me make sure, is this is that a term that you're okay with, convicted felon? That's the, uh, uh, what do you say, the American term? Is, is there <laughs> another term that you prefer? It, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, all right. Well, let, let me say this. I, I, I read your bio, and it stated that you were in and out of jail in high school until you were sentenced to a nine-year prison sentence. While in prison, you learn career skills, such as you've already mentioned, landscaper, electrician. And then when you were released in 2015, you actually entered the Orange Technical College in Florida, and you graduated with a cosmetology degree in 2017. You've told a little bit about how you had the good and the bad talking to you in, in either ear, but what <laughs> did you finally decide to make a change in your life in contrast to your earlier experiences with incarceration? What, what finally hit you when you said, ah, that's not where I want to be? What finally hit me, um, I want to give a shout out to Miss Covington, Miss Orange Technical College. And um, it was for her. She taught, she taught me a lot. But what really... Um, she's a teacher. She's a teacher, oh. yes. Um, what really sparked me is when I was incarcerated and all my friends, um, 
were um, went to prison. And when they went to prison, they went to prison for they're not. I I hope they gets out on the appeal, but they have life sentences right now. And for me to be like, okay, I got sentenced to nine years. I have a release date. And to see that the friends that I've been around got life sentences, it's just like, I can't live the rest of my life like this being in here. And that gives me that spark where I can't keep doing this here because all my friends are in prison right now and got life sentences. And I feel like I'm that hope to where I could show that it could be done instead of just going back that route and say, just think more positive. Because like now they, they, they call me today and just be like, man, Sean, I wish I would have listened to you. I wish I, and I just be like, I can't say I told you so because I was a hard head once when I was younger and I wasn't out there when y'all, whatever y'all was doing to be able to catch that life sentence. So it just, it just, I just didn't see myself doing my whole rest of my life in prison. All right. Well, it goes back to, I think when you get older, you start thinking about your future and you were able to see that from the, your friends that maybe, maybe that's not a future you wanted. Well, thank you for that. Well, at this point in time, I'm going to go to notary. In your bio, you stated that you grew up in Bell Glades, Florida, known as Muck City. And to fair, paraphrase your word, you said Muck City only bred athletes and convicts. As a matter of fact, you went to prison for a 10-year mandatory sentence and five years of probation. We were released in 2016. Tell me what you would tell your younger self to prevent your trajectory from going to prison. Yeah, athlete, not a convict. No, no. I, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's more out there than just athlete. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, um, uh, like the, the advice that I that I that I gave as far as being being be you. Don't try so hard to to please people to 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 want to fit in to to show that oh yeah I can do this. You know. I had a, uh, one of my mentors was my high school band teacher, uh, Mr. Mr. Willie Price. He told me one time in school, and I didn't get it till I was in prison, but he told me in school, he was like, you, is you, you so busy trying to chase them. I mean, you so busy trying to follow them that you don't see that they really trying to follow you. So it's like, y'all, you know what I mean? He didn't, I didn't understand. He like, but when I look at like, wow, I do have that effect on people. Like people do gravitate towards me and, and that I can ha I have that effect on people. And they was really looking back, like they was really trying to be cool with me and I'm trying to be cool with them, you know? So what I would tell my, 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 my younger self is just, just be, be you. Like that's the one thing that people that I want younger kids or everybody to do is be you, whatever it is that you, like people get a misconception of the word real nowadays you know especially people oh i'm real they think real mean you out here killing robbing or gang bang or do no real means being you whoever you are if you're a college boy if you're a book got a school boy go to school if if you uh or uh, uh whatever whatever it is that you do uh just be you because when you try to be someone else you can only pretend to be someone else for so long and eventually it's gonna fall apart and it's, it's not going to have a good ending. So just be you. Well, I hope that the young people who are listening to this, who are watching this, pay attention to what you both are saying. Because you're looking back, and with the maturity and the experience, you're telling them, hey, it's not worth it. it, it it's really not worth it. All right. Exactly. Well, let me ask Sean. I've read that taking class in, in prison is often treated as a privilege for selected individuals instead of accessible to all incarcerated individuals. What was the process for you to participate in career training and educational programs while you were in prison? Landscaper, plumber, what was your experience? Uh, my experience is, um, even though we was working for free, I look at it as um, learning a skill and something that I didn't know so I look at it and said, okay, I'm going to learn this and it's free. I'm already here. So I'm going to take advantage and learn everything I could learn. And so when I get out, I could have something to fall back on to where knowledge is power. So you can't, you go, I go to, uh, uh, I got a story. It's, it's, it's not going to be long. So um, I, I applied for uh, a concrete job 
and I was in prison. I know how to do concrete this, right? So the guy said, okay, he gave me an interview and um, he was like, okay, I need you to make me a slab. So I said, okay, I'm thinking he's gonna get me all the materials to make it. So I'm just like, okay, I'm waiting. He was like, oh, uh, all the materials over there. So I'm just like, oh man. I said, I know how to do it, but I need like the, I need to see the stuff in front of me to know how to do it. So I went in there, I grabbed this, I grabbed that, I grabbed it, I grabbed this. So I'm making the concrete. Like I said, I know how to do it. I'm making it and I did it right. And he was like, uh, you got the job. I was like, yes. So he was like, but I'm gonna tell you something. The only reason why you got the job because you did it right with all the wrong tools. <laughs> no! Found out. Found out. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he said, the fact that you know what you're doing and the fact that you you did it right with the wrong tools, you he said you got the job. And I was like, oh, wow. So then that's when he would be teaching me, hey, do it this way, do it this way, do it and teach me different avenues of how to do it. And that's another thing to where I just said, don't never give up. Like you said, a ch- that, that, that was an issue in front of me, a challenge that was in front of me. I didn't like get scared. I went in there, just went, okay, I just went to grab stuff that, okay, I know I could make this here work. And that's another thing. Don't never give up because I, I could have just gave up and missed the opportunity. And um, and uh, I was I was blessed to do the Kroger's Warehouse in Groveland, Florida, um, distribution center in, um, in Groveland, Florida. Well, let me ask you this. When there are people who are incarcerated and they don't have access to this, because sometimes com- the correction system doesn't have the money. I don't know why not. It costs $80 billion annually to incarcerate people. I, I but, so. <laughs> they, they don't make it available. It's yeah. something that they should make it available to all and should incarcerated individuals take advantage of. Yes. Um, they have they have programs there. Um, I just feel as though the knowledge to where um, this is for this and that's for that I think that could be a little more better because like I said, we, we they just put us there to work and they just be like, okay, all the tools are already provided. And it's just like, okay, go out there and work. That's like, if I get a push mower, they be like, okay, go out there and cut that grass. They're not telling me the right way to, okay, do it this way or do it this way. All they know, they just want it, they just want it done. So it's just like, okay, being in there, you can learn the basics, but then it's on you to enhance the basics. Mm-hmm. All right, so they don't give you particular career training. You just learning how to do it at the basic level, but at least gives you a starting point. Gives you a starting point. All right. Well, let me ask you this, notary. You stated that growing up, you had many obstacles with nothing to do but get in trouble in Muck City. It, it was just <laughs> trouble. Now, what, what what was your mindset before prison, during prison, and currently when you? left Muck City. What, what was your mindset? Um, first off, yeah, growing up in the, it, it's a small town. It's so small and I don't want to make it seem like it's just like, what it was, but it really wasn't anything to do but like get in trouble. But um, my mindset back then was it's so small. Like where I'm from, we got one red light. We don't have a Walmart. We don't have no restaurant. We got to go to another city to go to the mall. You know, so my mindset before was get out of here. Like get some money okay. to get, get my family out of, you know what I mean? Do something better. You know, I'm like, I was the first person in my family to actually go to college. I went to Florida A&M. I was in the March 100. Yeah, oh my gosh, congratulations. Yeah, I was the first. And um, so my mind frame was, do whatever I got to do to get out of here. You know what I mean? So I use my I use my 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 ability with music. I was in the band and I used that to get a scholarship to go to 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 FAMU. Um, then, but being brought up a certain way and doing certain things for so long, it's hard to let those bad habits go. You know, like and so I could I didn't stop my muck city living while i was in tallahassee if you understand what i mean and that caused me to go to the catch time to go to prison uh and my and mind and it goes to clear it up are you saying criminal activity yes yes they were the criminal activity that i did um while i was in tallahassee it led me to prison because i the, the way i the way i was brought up things i was doing i i, I couldn't get rid of that way even when i was in college so I just doing bad things and it led me to prison. And my mind, when I went to prison, my mind stayed in there was surviving. Like I um I got I done got hit in the head with locks. I done got stabbed. 
I don't the the police, uh, especially in Florida prison. They they man, they beat me. I wasn't even in for thirty days, and they beat me. They uh, fractured a rib. Uh, I cut my beard down. I had a hole that I could stick my tongue through and my top lip. Like they beat me bad. It was in the beginning survival. Uh, and at first, I had to accept the responsibility first because when I first went to prison, I still was on. Oh, they gave me ten years. Oh, oh, these jokes snitched on me. Or this did them, them, them. I didn't accept it. Like, but once I accept the responsibility, like, oh, yeah, you did it, bro. Like, just it's time do time now. You know what I mean? Because when I was still angry and aggressive and fighting and stuff, because I was still pushing off responsibility on other people. But once I accept the fact for my uh, accept it, you know what I mean? The responsibility. Mm-hmm. I changed. That's when I started learning Spanish. I can speak Spanish fluently. I can speak a little Creole. Like that's when that's when my mind changed. My mind state changed from survival to okay. How when I get out? How am I going to be a, a multimillionaire to to support my family after losing a decade in prison? You know that it, it, it shift. So that and was I, the after. Now how am the, I going to support my family versus I have to be the baddest, the baddest one in here in prison? Exactly. Exactly. And now. Yep. And now my mind state now since being out of prison, my mind state is is continuous, is growth, is knowledge, is is understanding and uh, uh, a book I read called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by John Kawasaki. I I encourage every 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 high school or uh, middle school, anybody that watches this, I encourage mm-hmm. you to read that book. That book Why is that? You. Why is that? That book changed the way you it changes the way you you see life you see things you know especially if you are already have that entrepreneurial spirit because me i always felt that i was different i always felt i always had seen things like i seen where i am now in the music i seen this in 2006 and 2008 while i was in prison you know i seen i actually like it may sound crazy but i seen i know you know and and I used to always think that I was like other people was like I thought I was different. But when I read that book, it made me realize, no, you really had a mind frame of millionaires, of wealthy, real people that can think. You know what I mean? Because the way that they think in that book, the things that they tell you about in the in the in the oh man, it's just a beautiful read. I promise. I I, I ask anybody. Yes, so it opened it, your mind, open your mind to the possibilities. Yes, it, it does. I one hundred percent. It teaches you about being stuck in a rat race of how society is. It's it's, it's beautiful. Okay, well, thank you for that. I'm sure there'll be people looking looking that up to, to check and take and read that. Well, let yeah. me turn to Sean here, and thank you for that. Sean, um, you quoted in your bio that the key to success is to focus on goals, not obstacles. What does that mean when it applies to your life? Um, what it means is the same thing, like I said, with the concrete situation. My goal was to get that slab. I just finish that slab, get this job. I did I did I didn't focus on the obstacle to where it's just like okay get this tool get that tool I focus on the goal so I feel like that um you're gonna have um a bumpy road going <laughs> to where you want to go but at the same time go over the bump and don't stop at the bump and be stuck at that bump hmm. okay now let me ask you this and I'll say this to, to notary According to one statistic, less than 4% of formerly incarcerated people have a college degree and 25% do not have a GED. We already, you already said it, you had gone off to college. Mm-hmm. Why is education such, an, such as a GED, high school diploma, a college degree, a career training important to all young adults in order for employment, in order for starting a business, to be, be able to financially take care of the family? Why is this so important? It, it it is it is so important to have uh, education for one, like I said earlier, so you can know, so nobody can take advantage of of you for not knowing certain things. It's, it's important for you to have a uh, because now you can't get a job doing anything without a, a GED or high school diploma or some type form of training. So you take advantage of it while you're in school and also. Um, this is my thing. I, I, I encourage like my, my younger people that I, that I mentor to, I'd rather you get a trade, go to trade school than college. Because when the trade school, it teaches you, when you leave a trade school, you automatically go and start a business because you are learning technical hands-on now. When you go to college, you just learning the books and the, you learning how to, what to do. 
when you're in the trade school, it better prepares you to go immediately into starting your own business because you're learning as you go. When you go to school and go to college, not talking bad about higher education, go to college if that is if you want to be doctor. You know what I mean? Go to college. I, I implore you to. But if if you have an entrepreneurial spirit and you really already know, but uh, I would encourage you to to go to a, te a, a, a vocational technical school to, to enhance your career because college is for people that are trying to figure out what it is they really want to do or they want to just get away and hang out if you oh. already focus you yeah well you what i tell young people because I, I do counsel them is that in high school is the best time to figure out what you want to do do you want to go with a blue collar career where you will require an apprenticeship a, a certification of licensing and exactly what you're saying or if you need to go for a professional career doctor lawyer teacher then you need that degree. And it exactly. depends on how long you're going to be in school. Is it a bachelor's four-year degree, a master's or doctorate? So not a matter of encourage them to go one way or the other. It's just a matter of exploring and figure out what they want to do. And then from exactly. there, that determines the, the, the schooling. Exactly. And one more, if I may say one more so last thing ahead. about that. Uh, and I, I tell like, I try to, like I say, I want to, I talk to a lot of younger guys, a lot of, I'd like to catch them when they like, eight nine like try to encourage them because society is so crazy now and I, I'm, I'm a victim of it as well but i see now people nowadays like you say i feel like when you're in high school you should be uh learning what you want to do you know what i mean then when you get in your teens and go to college you're working towards that nowadays people wait until we get in our 30s to actually figure out what i want so in the 30s you're supposed to be working from your 20 30 so in your 40 50 you can start relaxing now we wait until we get into our 30s to figure out what we want to do you got to work till you're 60 and then you got to relax but that was crazy you said that but i yeah no no i, I agree got, i agree with i got that. one i got one thing to say oh, about that right there um i feel like that it shouldn't have to wait till high school because you got some kids, everybody's different. Everybody, everybody mind is different. You got some people that already know what they want to do in middle school or elementary school. So I just feel like that um, being in high school, that's, that should give you that wake up call to where, okay, you know, after 12th grade, uh, I'm in the real world. So I feel like, I feel like that if you know what you want to do, pursue it. It doesn't matter if it's it, it, you. You could it could be elementary school, middle school, or high school. As long as it's there, that's good. It's better to have something there than to go through school and and then now you're out of school. Okay, what did you learn? They can be like, uh, I don't know. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, so you tell me you did 12 years of school and you didn't know what you want to do. So it's just like hey, you, you, you. Once you, once everybody's sparks hit different. When it hit, take advantage of it and and keep going with it. Because like you said, like my spark didn't hit to. Uh, I'm gonna be real. Like I was, I was in prison because going throughout high school and and, and middle school and like, like like you said, it's it's the the area that I grew up in. It's just like I didn't have no vision then, and and and, and I, I had the mind, but I didn't have the vision. The vision didn't kick in to where it's just like, okay, now it kicked in. Now I have to be able to, and everything just started coming together now. So it's just like, like you said, once once you figure it out, keep going with it. You so have to wait to high school. That to lead off of what you both said, career exploration, as young as possible, is important because it gives you yes. direction versus just the book learning. The book yes. learning is great because you need to read, you need to write, you need the math. But let's give our kids a leg up to try and figure yeah. out what, even if they change the career later on, just yeah. some career exploration. So yes. with that being said, let me ask you both. Either one of you can ask this question. Now, there are conditions in community or home life that create an environment that drives young people to crime. It just does. Um, what investments from business, government, and parents need to make a change. Because, you know, kids are exposed to poverty, the need for money, boredom. What is it that needs to change? And who are some of the entities or shareholders, stakeholders that need, need to make that change? Um, I really believe that things that need to be changed, I really believe we have so many multi-millionaires and all the people with so much money over here if a collective we say okay one year 
everybody pull the money, get all the multimedia, and we focus on one state. And we get we get right this one state. Then we go to another state. You know what I mean? They, and, and just focus on one. Everybody, all these millionaires, if everybody will really want to change and really want to help, focus on one state. Everybody pull one state. Once that state right, then we go to the next state. Now we got, you know what I mean? And just do it systematically. And, and because it's, it's way too many millionaires and people out here showing all this money with 27 bedroom mansions. And we got people out here starving and homeless. Like, that's one thing I really want to change. Like, I, I, don't, want to, I don't understand that. I, don't, I really don't understand that. So a sense of community, and even if it's not the state, starting off with your own community, giving back. In the community, exactly. If exactly. you left something behind, what can you do to make that community better? Exactly, uh, exactly. All right, and, and, and that makes much sense. Now, what about you, Sean? You have something to contribute to that? Um, I, li I like that response. Okay. Yeah, I like that response. Well, that being said, now we're going to turn to community re-entry for those who have been incarcerated. Now, and how it prepares individuals for returning to the communities, because there's a big shortfall, big shortfall. Countless individuals are released from prison without lack of housing, employment, transportation. Some people don't even have identification. We're talking driver's license, birth certificate. And it hampers the successful transition back to the community. Did either of you experience those types of issues or challenges when you got out? Um, yeah. Um, in Florida, yeah. When you get out of prison, they give you a bus ticket. And I think it was $50 or $75 or 100 One of them, they give you $100 and a bus ticket anywhere you want to go in the state or whatever, something like that. Um, they don't, they don't, they really don't uh, care. Once you once your time up and you finish working for them in their prison system, and when you're free now, hey, you're going to do whatever you're going to do. You know what I mean? If you go around to the bus stop and get in the fight, they're willing to come and pick you right back up and bring you right back. I done seen it happen. But um, when I got out, um, it was it was, it was was difficult. They have to, when you do a long time, you got to be reacclimated back to society. You don't know how to you know, go and get you. So you got to do really take a driving test and all, you know, just to get identification. And then, especially if you come out on any form of uh, probation or paper, uh, they want you to do stuff in a timely manner, but you you can't you, you can move without an ID. You can't go and get a job without an ID. And then a lot of places be bagged up. And that frustrates a lot of individuals that get out of prison. It frustrates and be like, man, forget all of that. I'm finna go back over here because they they make they put so much on me and so such and want me to do it so fast, but I don't it's, it's not that easy. Okay. So it's it's a hard, you, hard trying to listen. Unless you have a good support system. And I thank God for my family. I had a good support system. Uh, a lot of people go to prison and don't have a support system and that they'd be the worst for them. But if you got a good strong support system, it's it's it's, it's an easier transition. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yes. Okay. Well, Sean, did you have something you wanted to add to that? Yeah. Um, um, when you said that they they don't care, um, I feel like that it shouldn't be on them. It should be on you. And and um, when I was in prison, like I said, it's all about the research. Mm -hmm. And when I was in work release right before I got out and Notorious slept right next to me. He was right. He he slept right in the bunk right next to me before I got out. I got out a year. I got a year before. I got out a year before him. Right. And um, I wrote the court system, and I wrote the court system. What do I have to do to get my license? And what do I have to? What do I have to pay and everything? And what I found out what they did is they tied my court costs to my license. So if I don't pay the court costs, then my license is suspended. And that's a, yeah. And, 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 and it, you it, in court, they're prosecuting you. They made you pay for it? Yes. How much so, was that? I'm sorry, but it was. Um, I'm almost done paying with them. Uh, my last payment is next month. <laughs> yeah, but how, how much was that? I don't mean, if you don't want a, a round yeah, it, number. You... Yeah, it was, I know it was. Over, over, over 500. Over no, 500? Whoa, wait, it's like over 40,000. Well, over 500. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm over, sorry. Over, it's over 40,000, over 40, 50,000 dollars. I'm shocked. I'm speechless. I have not, I've, I'm. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and just getting out of prison and they expect you to just, I know I need my license. So you look at it, I, 
I can't pay all of this just getting out. So I had to be put on a payment plan to where it's like I pay an amount, I, I, I pay 75 to 150 a month since I had got out of prison until I knocked it down, all the way down. And you could pay extra on top of it or you could pay less or whatever, but at the minimum that they had me pay was 75. And like I said, I got my last payment, my, my last payment is next month. And like I said, it's, it's I have to pay it because that's the only way I keep my license. That's like a student loan. And, you, yeah. and you, you've just gotten out of prison without too many prospects it's, for employment. Exactly. Yeah. So and then, then, then you look at it now, if I don't, if, if I don't pay the court costs, and then let's say if I get pulled over and then now I'm back in the system with driving life suspended. So it's just like it's it's the system is designed for I feel like it's designed for us to fail. But at the same time, you just have to be strong and just keep pushing because I feel like that's that's hard. That's a hard bargain to just get out and then trying to get yourself back together then and then now you look at it they like you said they talking about they don't have this money okay where's all the money that i'm not the only one that's paying court costs i'm not no i mean so it's like where's all this money going hmm. all right so let, let me turn to notary because i'm speechless on that one i'm just gonna move on but notary about seven hundred thousand people are released from prison each year okay some states release individuals said with a ticket bus ticket some get less than forty dollars as a stipend, is a, is a nationwide standardized system needed to provide a smooth transition for this vulnerable, because it is a vulnerable population, with at least employment, mental health, housing, and transportation before release. Although Sean said that you should do the research yourself, is it something that the nation is responsible for? I feel like, I feel like it is something that the nation should really help as far as not waiting until the last but like you say have these things set up for a transition like everyone needs to have a, a a halfway house what we call them a halfway house or a transition house for everybody that comes some people don't go to a transit some people just get out and just go straight back up under the bridge but if you give a person that may have a person go to the transition house help them transition get back reacclimated with society you know and uh, one of the things for one of my future endeavors, I'm sorry if I may go off a little, is that's what I want to do. Uh, we want to start a uh, halfway house. Uh, everything that I do is predicated for uh, people from coming from prison because we get the last look for jobs, everything. We get last look. So everything, all my businesses, my trucking company, uh, the label, everybody uh, on my label is done been in prison. You know what I mean? I'm not advocating it, but I just want to show a strong unity of, hey, yeah, we all been in prison, but look at us now. We all bosses. You know what I mean? Now you coming out of prison, you don't get looked at last for a job. I want to start a halfway house uh, that where we solicit jobs from, like if you want to do lawn care, if you, you want the electrician or whatever, we go to these companies and solicit jobs from these companies. Hey, I got this guy. He's going to come work for you. You know what I mean? You give him a job tryout, get federally bonded so you can, you protect it. Um, and, and I want to help guys coming out of prison like that. I want to start a halfway house. So, hey, you want to come do music? Hey, you got an area for you. You want to do lawn service? Oh, we, we can get you a job. You want to barber? We, you know what I mean? That's the thing that, that the nation needs to do more of. And that's one of the things that I really want to do. Okay. And, and it's an admirable thing to do. In my research, I did see that there are so many organizations that are scattered. And it depends on what state you're in, in terms of the amount of support. And that's what makes it difficult for some in some states. Uh, and before I come back to you, let, let me ask Sean a question. There are some people, and it's a sensitive topic, that believe that those convicted felons who have created issues and been violent against other citizens deserve it. Why do we have to give you anything? What, what do you think about that? Um. I feel like the past is the past. Um, and I feel like that we can't dwell on the past in certain circumstances because it's every charge is different. But I just feel that you can't count a person out. I feel like that everyone deserves another chance because look at us. Like if we didn't have a, a, another chance, will we be here right now? I feel like that we had that chance again but like you said it's on us if we want to do right because you got people that get that chance and then 
they keep doing wrong. They keep doing wrong. They keep doing wrong. And they keep doing wrong, what leads them up to life sentence in prison or a death sentence in prison. And you look at it, um, it's like, like it's just, it's, it's up to the individual. It's up to the individual. And that's how I look at it. Okay. Well, I'll go to notary and then I'll, I'll stay on you because I have another question. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, uh, about that what you were saying about the organizations that that, that help one of the one of the things has become so bad now nowadays like different organizations that are supposed to be claiming to help they scamming like people are so scared to trust these type of organizations because the gov they'll go to the government and get this grant money and don't use none of the money for what it's supposed to be used for that'd be my biggest thing i i'd be scared to i'd be one i'd be sending money uh not people been but like the hungry like that really affect me, like speeding the kids and the hungry people but a lot of those big organizations they be they billionaires they they using this money for other ventures they only a small part of the money that you give go to what they really cause they have and that's a big thing right now and they like you see with the black lives matter thing going on right now where they accusing of the black lives matter later of got eight nine mansions across the world and accusing her of scamming everything so it's just a trust thing. Nowadays, everybody's scared to trust and uh, other organizations like that because, you know, like you say, uh, one 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 bad apple shouldn't spoil the bunch, but a lot of times it does. Okay. And reference to Black Lives Matter, just to make sure, allegedly, we don't know for sure. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> but allegedly. 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 Yeah, but what allegedly. we can say is that for organizations, there are ways to determine how much money is going to the administration versus how much money is going to the actual uh, people they're trying to support. That there are ways to take research that is just that we have to do our due diligence before I, we give our money. I hope that you enjoyed part two of this interview about the career opportunities for entrepreneurship. Stay tuned for part three. Thank you for watching.